Hello again, it's uh, Paul Beckwith. Um, so, in the last video, um, I talked about um, a lot of different things, actually, some personal things. Um, I talked about a um, bit about uh, the um, this, you know, what Biden is doing with the U.S. government, some executive orders that look very promising on climate change. So I can be cautiously optimistic that they might get serious this time on addressing the huge risks that we face from abrupt climate change. Um, I also talked about some of the books that I've been reading recently, but my main focus um, I want to talk about, and this, this video, I'll just get right into it, is global ice loss has been accelerating at record rates around the planet. So, you know, climate change is always faster than expected, um, accelerating continuously. Um, you know, we're heading in, we're in an abrupt climate situation. I think the next uh, number of years, we're going to see huge numbers of, of climate surprises. And, uh, you know, we're heading rapidly to this so-called blue ocean event. So this is a Guardian article from a few days ago, um, January 25th, just a couple of days ago, uh, that basically the rate of ice loss around the globe is in line with the worst case scenarios of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. So the rate of ice, ice loss accelerated. Um, this is global ice loss by 65 percent between 1994 and 2017. If you just look at Greenland, um, for example, uh, if you look at ice melt from the Greenland and Antarctica, you know, basically the the rate of melt loss has been doubling with a doubling period of about eight to 10 years or so. That's just for Greenland and Antarctica. If you consider all the glaciers and ice shelves and sea ice and everything else, then the rate of ice loss um, has accelerated by 65% between 1994 and 2017. So this is a period of about 23 years or so. Okay, so the acceleration is at a record rate melting of Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets is speeding up the fastest, okay, as I just mentioned, their rates of loss, doubling basically every eight to 10 years or so. This rate of loss is in line with the worst case scenarios of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC. Um, and this paper was just published on Monday in the journal of the Cryosphere, and I'll talk about that paper in detail. Um, Sea level rise on this scale from this global melt of ice will have very serious impacts on coastal communities. Um, you know, I, they're talking about a meter of sea level rise by 2100. I still say, you know, I still say I wouldn't be surprised to see seven meters by 2070. And I've done a number of videos a number of years ago about that. You can just look them up on my YouTube channel. About 28 trillion tons of ice was lost between 1994 and 2017. Now, this information first came out in, um, so this paper here, this link brings you to this paper here from about five months ago, back in August. And I did some videos on it about how the Earth has lost 28 trillion tons of ice in less than 30 years. The reason, uh, so, so I'll talk about, uh, well, basically in the paper, so August was when it was received. So there was some press releases then. Um, then it was reviewed. It had some to have some revisions, which were done on November 18th. Then it was accepted November 18th, and then it was published January 25th. So this is sort of the time lag. You know, this is with one set of revisions, right? Um, okay, so basically. So, so I did talk about it and do some videos back in August when this came out, but now I'll go into detail in the, in the paper. Um, the amount of ice loss, because this is a UK authors in Scotland, they say there would be enough to put an ice sheet 100 meters thick across the UK. Two thirds of the ice loss was caused by the warming of the atmosphere. About one third was caused by the warming of the oceans. Okay, so that's the ratio, that's an important sort of number, rule of thumb to keep in mind. So we'll see the, the rising air temperature. Um, and the part that's from the warming of the seas is from ice that is grounded on bedrock well below sea level. So the seas warm, you know, it thins the ice shelves. Um, it melts away the ice that's grounded. 
And, uh, you know, that's happening a lot in Antarctica because the surface is still well above zero. So there's, there, there's I'll, anyway, I'll talk about the surface mass balance, etc. Over the period studied, ice, rate of ice loss accelerated by 57%. It was about 0.8 trillion tons per year in the 90s and 1.2 trillion tons a year by 2017. About half of all the ice loss was from land which contributes, of course, directly to global sea level rise. But the other half um, is from um, the oceans, okay? The ice is like, it's sea ice loss in the Arctic is a big factor. Some sea ice loss in Antarctica um, and the, the ice that is grounded below sea level, okay? So it's rising water temperature that causes the ice to be lost from the, over the oceans. The greatest quantities of ice were lost from floating ice in the polar regions, raising the risks of a feedback mechanism known as albedo loss. So I talked about the feedback mechanisms from, uh, you know, Peter, um, Peter from from here, from from Peter Carter's uh, work, and I'll I'll do a whole set of videos on on his slides. He's done a great job. So these are the feedback effects there. Okay. Um, so glaciers showed the next biggest loss of ice volume with more than 6 trillion tons lost. A, about a quarter of global ice loss um, was from the glaciers. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, the loss of glaciers, their water storage for many regions. Think of the um, Himalayas, um, the glaciers up in the Himalayans that melt. And, pro and provide sources for the rivers that run, which feed billions of people. Um, you know, huge, uh, you know, shrunken glaciers in those regions produce less water for agriculture, um, as well as contributing to global mean sea level rise. The glaciers are critical as a freshwater resource for local communities. The retreat of glaciers around the world is of crucial importance at both local and global scales for, for food production. Okay, so there were satellite observations of over a 23-year period, um, and combined, and and this allowed the this provided the source of the data for the paper on the Earth ice imbalance. Okay, so this is the paper here in the cryosphere right here. The review article I'll discuss in detail. There's lots of other neat stuff going on. So this paper here, maybe I should do a video on this year-round impact of winter sea ice sickness. Um, snow models, uh, this is this review paper, um, all kinds of uh, different stuff, Antarctic sea ice cover, you know, there's all kinds of stuff, and this is open source, so open access uh, journal, interactive public peer review. So they put the paper out there, many people can comment on it. Okay, so let's talk about this paper here, this, this review article. So again, they used satellite observations, plus models, so they found that the Earth lost 28 trillion tons of ice between 1994 and 2017. Arctic sea ice loss was the biggest component at 7.6 trillion tons out of the 28. Next was Antarctic ice shelves at 6.5 trillion tons. Then third was mountain glaciers at 6.1 trillion tons. Then the Greenland ice sheet at 3.8 trillion tons. Of course, and, and as we lose more and more Arctic sea ice, we pass a tipping point, and then Greenland is the only cold area up in the Arctic, and this rate will greatly increase. And then the Antarctic ice sheet was 2.5 trillion tons. Southern Ocean sea ice, 0 0.9 million trillion tons. These things have all decreased in mass. So that's the main components of the 28 trillion tons. So it's the sea ice. Which, so as far as raising sea level, this doesn't do it because it's floating, okay? This doesn't do it unless it's grounded on the bedrock. If it's just an ice shelf floating, it doesn't. Um, mountain glaciers, of course, re cause a rise in sea level. Greenland ice sheet, yes. Um, Antarctic ice sheet, uh, yes. Okay, this is the ice on land. Um, and the sea ice in the Southern Ocean, so the Antarctic uh, sea ice doesn't raise sea level rise. Okay, just about half, well, 58% of the ice loss was from the Northern Hemisphere, 42% from the Southern Hemisphere. And the rate of ice loss has risen by 57% since the 1990s. So 
0 0.8 uh, trillion tons per year in the 90s. And uh, now, you know, 1.2 trillion tons per year, at least in 2017, due to increased losses from mountain glaciers, Antarctic, Greenland, and the Antarctic ice shelves. Okay, the loss of grounded ice from the Antarctic and Greenland ice sheets and mountain glaciers has raised global sea levels by 34.6 millimeters. Now, it doesn't seem like a lot, but that number is rapidly increasing. Most of these ice law, uh, losses are due, two-thirds, in fact, are, are, are from atmospheric uh, melting. So warming atmosphere, it's the surface ice, it's melting, the water's uh, running into the oceans, okay? Um, and so 68% is from Arctic sea ice, mountain glaciers, ice shelf calving, and ice sheet surface mass balance. The remaining losses of ice, 32% is from ice sheet discharge and ice shelf thinning that is being driven by oceanic melting. So 68% is got an atmospheric, uh, the, the atmosphere is warming, it's melting the ice. 32% is the ocean is warming and uh, is driving ice sheet discharge at the coast and ice shelf thinning. Okay, now if you take all of these elements of the cryosphere melting together, they take up about 3.2% of the global energy imbalance. So that's not very much, 3.2%. Okay, so there's a lot of details in this paper, but let's go and look at the, um, so it divides it up uh, with an intro about the fluctuations over time of the ice and so on. Um, you know, I'll go through it. Uh, I might as well go through it and I'll do it. I'll do another video on this. I'll do a, a part three. So, Fluctuations in the Earth's ice cover over time are driven by changes in the planetary radiative forcing. So think of the Milankovic cycles, okay, these uh, 10,000 years. The, the Milankovic cycles are based on the geometry of the Earth and its orbit around the Sun. Okay, so the Earth, uh, the, the eccentricity or the circularness of the orbit of the Earth around the Sun changes over time. The tilt of the Earth changes over time, and the actual um, uh, center of axes of rotation of the Earth um, oscillates like a little, a little top spinning on, on a uh, surface, and uh, that changes as well, and that creates you know I, cold periods, the ice ages, and the warm interglacials. Okay, so so it's the it's the radiation. Um, the planetary radiative forcing that has, has that is key for how much ice there is on the planet, and uh, you know that changes conditions in the ocean. It changes the atmospheric circulation. It changes the freshwater resources available. Um, it says Earth cryosphere is created as meteoric ice. Now you look at this and think, well, meteoric ice. There's two definitions of meteoric. So one definition is relating to meteors or meteorites. So that's not the one. It's this one. It's, re it's basically relating to or denoting water derived from the atmosphere by precipitation or condensation. Okay, so, me so meteorology, you know, it's based on that term. Uh, meteorology, meteor meteoric, uh, not the meteor or meteorite term. I, I, I thought that was, you know, worth po pointing out. Okay, so the Earth's cryosphere is created by, you know, snow basically in Antarctica, Greenland, and in mountain glaciers, and then the snow builds up and forms the ice. And, and of course, you have an ocean component, right? In the Arctic and Southern Oceans, the water freezes, forming the ice. The polar ice sheets store more than 99%, or 30 million cubic kilometers, of the Earth's freshwater ice on land. Even modest levels raise the global sea level. So we're, although we're not talking, talking about ice on rivers and lakes and stuff, it's only it's less than one percent. So these numbers are are very valid. And of course, um, you know, as the ice is melting, it increases coastal flooding, disturbs the oceanic currents, and the bathymetry. Um, okay, and these losses of ice have tracked in the upper range of climate warming scenarios. Um, in by the IPCC, so the RCP, uh, the 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 8.5 RCP 8.5, the high end 
scenario. So I'll continue in the next video, and thanks again for listening.